Let's talk about coffee makers. Every once in a while I'll run across a product that is so bad I can't wait to tell people about it. The number of things that's wrong with this coffee maker is overwhelming. I make a pot of coffee every day. So one of these things has a finite life at best. They will last maybe a year and a half, two years on the off chance, and usually they'll quit in the middle of a pot of coffee. The heating element goes out or there's a safety device in here. Once it trips it does not reset. With the glass carafe in place, if you open the lid, this gadget opens with the lid. And this thing is supposed to come down and sit inside this filter basket. And this ring gives you the impression that it should sit inside here. It doesn't fit. It doesn't even come close. But now, and when the basket goes in here, it bounces around, wiggles around. And there's several places where it can catch on a lip here or over on this side. It does not sit square on top of the carafe. This little button on top of the lid is supposed to push up on this to allow the coffee to go into the coffee pot or the carafe. And if that doesn't get lined up just right, it doesn't push that button up. Coffee comes up, overflows, and you'll have coffee all over the counter. This doesn't fit that, and the basket doesn't fit into this thing. Looking at the coffee pot or the carafe, it has a lid on it. The lid has a little button on here that pushes up on this little valve, in theory. The problem here is that the lid does not fit the carafe. It comes down on one side. And it's, if you wiggle it just right, you can almost get it to stay where it's supposed to. But the minute you put it into the coffee maker, down she goes, and it no longer pushes up on that button. If it doesn't push up on the button, the coffee basket overfills with coffee and it goes all over the counter. If we look at a filter basket out of most coffee makers, they have ribs in the bottom and they have ribs on the side. Not Black & Decker. They put ribs in the bottom and they make the side of their basket absolutely smooth. What could possibly go wrong with that? If we put a filter into a Mr. Coffee basket or whatever, we have these little ribs these ribs will keep this paper filter from getting pasted against a smooth surface. The ribs in the bottom hold the bottom of the filter up so liquid can flow into the basket and out through the valve. And these sides keep the paper from sticking to the side of the basket which increases the flow area of the filter. When we get to the Black & Decker basket, it has some ribs on the bottom. That holds the basket up off the bottom. But when this gets full of water, the paper gets pasted up against the sides of the basket. It has very little flow area for the water to get out to the valve. The basket overflows and goes all over the counter. So there's at least three ways that this thing can put coffee all over your counter instead of into the coffee pot. What I have found with this coffee maker is that I have to let it make about half a pot of coffee and turn it off and let the liquid eventually find its way through the filter and into the coffee pot and then turn it back on and let it finish the other half of the brew. Once it's done and the water in that has finally drained out of here and you have a wet filter with grounds in it, you go to turn that upside down to shake it out. You can't hardly get this out of this thing because this has pasted itself against a smooth surface. With a Mr. Coffee filter basket or one that has been copied along their design, and it has the ribs in here. Once the water has cleared the filter and you just have a wet filter and grounds in here, you can go to the waste basket, turn it upside down, and it comes out quite easily. This Teflon type coating comes off fairly quick. 
But that seems to be true for most of these coffee makers, so we'll ignore that. And now everything seems to have one of these programmable controllers, so you can tell it when to make coffee and all that. The stupid thing shuts off every two hours, which is very annoying. I make a pot of coffee. I want it to stay hot until I tell it to turn off. What I really want is a coffee maker with an on-off switch, but you can't find those anymore. Now everything's got a clock in it and is programmable. If I could just program it to stay on, that would be good. One morning I went to make coffee and the coffee maker decided it wasn't going to work anymore. I went to Walmart where I could usually find a Mr. Coffee Maker and Walmart no longer handled that. So the simplest thing that they had was this Black & Decker and I do not know what possessed me to buy a Black & Decker product. I quit buying their products back in the mid 80s when I thought they were circling the drain. That's my opinion. But if you see one of these on sale someplace for two dollars, walk away from it. It's not worth two dollars. This is one of the worst made products I've seen in a long time. I'm going to take this out to the dumpster. I'm going to throw it in. But first I'm going to cut off this cord. The cord's okay. It's not bad. The cord's alright. The rest of this, adios. Let's review. First we have this thing up here that does not come down and engage with the, the filter basket. The filter basket can get crooked in there. And if it's crooked, the valve does not engage with the lid on the carafe. If the valve does not engage, the filter basket overfills, coffee goes all over the counter. The inside of the filter basket is smooth. It gives a much reduced flow capacity to the paper filter. The paper filter gets glued up against the side of the basket. The water cannot run out of the filter basket fast enough to keep up with the perking of the hot water. The basket overflows. Coffee goes all over your counter. The lid does not sit on top of the carafe. When it's down like this, which is most of the time, this will not push up on the valve of the filter basket. If it does not push up on the valve and the filter basket, coffee overflows and goes all over the counter. Then when you get done, you go to try to empty this, and the filter basket is in there, and it's difficult to get rid of the paper filter. In 1972, the Mr. Coffee brand drip coffee maker was first made available for home use in the United States. That was 44 years ago. Just how hard is it to reverse engineer or copy a successful product like a Mr. Coffee maker? This is a Mr. Coffee maker. I bought it a couple of days ago. About as simple a style as what anybody makes today. Unfortunately, it still has this programmable controller on it. There's no gadget in the lid. This thing swings back and forth over the filter basket. The filter basket sits in here very solid and engages. In fact, this is the exact same filter basket that was in my last coffee maker. If there's nothing wrong with it, why change it? The basket has ribs in it, which increases the flow capacity of the paper filter. The valve on the bottom of the basket engages with the carafe. The carafe has a lid that fits. That pushes up on the valve on the bottom of the filter basket. This morning I put water in here. I put a filter and coffee in here. I turned it on and walked away. When I came back I had 12 cups of coffee. I had no coffee on the counter. Imagine that.